Good afternoon, I'm Joseph Johnson and this is NTN Nationwide. Glad you could join us. President Muhammad Obari has formally broken his silence over the recent attacks on his administration from certain quarters, saying those who politicize isolated incidents of insecurity are neither patriotic nor have the country at heart. The president said that this while exchanging views with a delegation of the Buhari campaign organization on a solidarity visit. State House correspondent Adam Osamu is still working on the report and hopefully should come in the course of this newscast. To the National Assembly now, where the Senate has called on the federal government to engage the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities and Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities to avert the notice of strike issued by both unions. The motion moved by Senator Jibrin Barao advised the unions to meet with the Academic Staff Union of Universities to address perceived grey areas. Senator Ayo Akinye Luye uh, drew the attention of the Senate to the murder of Funke Olakunri along Akure Ore Expressway as the Senate urged the Inspector General of Police to intensify efforts in apprehending and prosecuting the perpetrators. And the House of Representatives has urged the federal government to put stringent measures to address insecurity on the highways across the country. This followed a motion brought before it at Tuesday's plenary at Representative or by Representative Isaac Adedayo from Ondo State in collaboration with nine other members on the need to investigate the killing of Mrs. Olufunke Olakunri along Benin. Benin Ore Road on Friday, 12 July. Deliberating on the matter, members believe that the Nigerian police is being overwhelmed by the prevailing security issues across the country. The House resolved to send delegation to condole with the family and the government of Ondo State, urge the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies to fish out perpetrators and bring them to justice. The House also urged the security agencies to collaborate actively adequately in the areas of intelligence gathering and sharing mechanism, as well as ensure close circuit cameras are mounted on the streets of major cities as a measure to combat in the act. Ahead of the implementation of African Continental Free Trade Area, the General Assembly of ECOWAS on Tripartite Social Dialogue Forum is working towards addressing key decent work deficits and unemployment in the region through the instrument of social dialogue. Delegates attending the three-day conference taking place in Abuja are expected to examine proposals for restructuring the ECOWAS Social Dialogue Forum with the view to making it more functional, effect uh, that's efficiently and of course effectively. Emmanuel Aimero has details. Recently, African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement was signed to spur economic growth and open the African market to the world. With the challenges of capital flows, falling commodities and underemployment in the ECOWAS sub-region, delegates at the General Assembly are working out strategies on how to save the sub-region from further drifting into a dumping ground when the after implementation takes off. The Continental Free Trade Agreement, there's no way you're going to address that if we do not look at issues of an appropriate forum that will facilitate this both at the continental level and at the sub-regional level and ECOWAS is a key player here. Social dialogue as one of the core pillars of the decent work and gender can play an important role in linking employment with trade and economic policies. It interacts with all parts of the economic and social development of a country. We have a lot of work at hand to accomplish. 
as a tripartite body to catch up with the rest of Africa and indeed the rest of the world. ECOWAS has already packaged a four-year draft decent work regional program to serve as impetus to job creation, social security, and improve working conditions for members of the sub-region. In the course of this three-day meeting also, you will be looking at the draft directive on minimum standards on harmonization of labor laws in the ECOWAS region which will be presented to you for consideration and validation. The conference ends on Thursday. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. As the world's population continues to increase by the minutes, some Nigerians are drawing the attention of policymakers to issues affecting women and young people, especially those living with HIV and AIDS. Now, this was at a rally organized by the International Community of Women Living with HIV West Africa. Kende Olale reports. Anita Ikwe was born with HIV, and for 22 years, she has been stigmatized by people who are aware of her status. Anita has not let her condition deter her, as she is today standing with other women and girls living with HIV and AIDS to demand a better living condition. If you're not 18, you can't access any social reproductive health rights services, which include family planning, safe abortion, issues of condoms, and all of that. And so we have challenges in assessing such. So most of us hardly go to the facilities for such services, you understand? And which this is a barrier and an obstacle into ending bringing an end to reinfection. The adverse effects of the continuous increase in world population on development experts say cannot be overemphasized. This is why the international community of women living with HIV in West Africa is advocating that world leaders, policymakers, grassroots organizers, institutions and all the stakeholders look into the issues of family planning, maternal and child health, poverty, right to health, adolescent pregnancy, girl-child education, child marriage, and sexually transmitted infections. They should remember that we are people and we have our human rights. Health is paramount to everybody, irrespective of who you are. The United Nations estimated the world population to be above 7 billion now. And if the issues leading to this rapid growth are not addressed, the world is projected to hit 8 billion people by 2030. And that is what Anita and others here want to draw attention to. In Abuja, Kendi Olaleye, NT News. Turning to the judiciary now. The Presidential Election Petition Court has admitted in evidence the electronically generated evidence where INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud uh, Yakubu cleared the air that election results would not be transmitted electronically due to communication challenges. Counsel to President Mohammad Buhari Alex Izion San took the leave of the court to tender in evidence the compact disc and the document containing its certification. In the disc which was played in the open court, Professor Yakubu averred that due to the identified blind spots as a result of some parts of Nigeria not covered by any network, it would be difficult to transmit election results electronically. Professor Yakubu also identified security challenge regarding cybercrime as one of the reasons for the Commission's inability to transmit election results electronically. Counsel to the petitioners, Chris Uche San, objected to the admissibility of the two documents, as at the time of this report, PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, have called additional five witnesses at the ongoing hearing of the petition. Now, this brings to 45 the witnesses the petitioners have called since the commencement of the hearing of the substantive matter. By the agreement of all councils, the petitioners have 10 days to call their witnesses, and this Tuesday's hearing marks the eighth day. Time now to join Hingunu in our Lego studio for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Hingunu. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. As a way of decongesting the courts, 
The Lagos Multidoor Courthouse is encouraging Nigerians with disputes in areas of property, administration of state, medical negligence, banking and insurance to come forward for settlement at no cost to the parties. The director of Lagos Multidoor Courthouse, Adeyinka Aru Yewun, at the opening of the settlement week said, the initiative is meant to supplement justice delivery by offering alternative options to resolving disputes. Vera Chinoba has more. The settlement week of the Lagos Multidoor Courthouse is designed to impact the justice system of Lagos State through reduction of caseload in the courts. It is also to encourage early settlement of cases, create awareness of the alternative dispute resolution and boost public confidence. Considering the number of um, parties that have come into the center today, you can see that there is a definitive buy-in from the legal community and from the citizenry. It is definitely a cheaper method, it is faster, and parties come out as friends. Facilitators who are legal experts mediate on a wide range of disputes from employment, trade, family, succession, landlord and tenant brought by the parties. Since we started having the settlement week, we've been able to settle so many cases and we've been able to assist the court in reducing the court docket. The way they talk to us, talk to me and the tenant, the way they do everything, I like them, the way they do. The Lagos Settlement Week is, however, not without challenges. We need the assistance or, well, the contributions and cooperation of institutions by sending adequate representation of people who can take decisions during this um, settlement week. Out of the 753 cases mediated on in 2018, 456 were settled. Among them are an administration of a state case, which had been in court for 29 years, and a bank claim of 1.8 billion naira. The Lagos Settlement Week is a joint initiative of the Lagos Multidoor Courthouse, Lagos State Judiciary, Lagos State Government, and the Nigerian Bar Association. In Lagos, Viera Chumuba, NTA News. The Lagos State Government has assured residents of improved water supply in the state as it also unveiled plans to collaborate with foreign investors towards creating jobs and improving the country's GDP through investments in the water sector. The group managing director of the state's water corporation, Mumi Nubadmos, gave the assurance at an event in Lagos. Nusa Osula reports. Is life and sufficient water supply is central to life and civilization. Water is part of the five basic human needs and plays a key role in the other four. Nigeria is abundantly blessed with water resources. However, as of 2017, only 69% of Nigerians have access to improved water supply, with 57% of them being of rural population. The responsibility of water supply in Nigeria is shared between three tiers of governments, federal, state and local. While the federal government is in charge of water resources management and state governments have the primary responsibility for urban water supply through state water agencies, local governments together with communities are responsible for rural water supply. We are not there yet. We still have a lot of people that are not getting the water in Lagos, for instance, and the same thing all over the country. And the federal government, the president have declared state of emergency on water. And those are the type of things. And of course, our state have embraced it, and a lot of states have embraced it too. When you have improved water delivery services in Lagos State, it will benefit everybody, including the youth. Especially for policymakers, it gives them the opportunity to also take a look at the products they have and how they fit into national, uh, national policies of science and technology and development. Stakeholders in the water sector also reiterated that reliable access to basic water is critical to achieving Nigeria's industrialization drive, citing that the federal and state governments, in partnership with the private sector and foreign investors, are determined to implement water projects. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. 
Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has restated the commitment of the state government to plant trees on all new roads being constructed and create more parks to protect the environment and promote healthy living. The governor, who was represented by his wife, Dr. Ibijo Kesonwolu, met this known at the 2019 tree planting campaign organized by the Lagos State Parks and Gardens Agency in Lekki. Nosa Osula reports. Trees contribute to the environment by providing oxygen, improving air quality, climate amelioration, conserving water, preserving soil, and supporting wildlife. During the process of photosynthesis, trees take in carbon dioxide and produce the oxygen we breathe. Dr. Ibijoke Songwolu emphasized the importance of tree planting to humanity, saying that besides providing food and shelter, Trees weighed off pollution and deforestation. Let's resonate it across the city of Lagos. And as we mark our birthdays, let's plant a tree. As we dedicate our children, let's plant a tree. This little act of benevolence to nature can actually save our planet from further destruction. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of the Environment, Abiodun Bangboye, urged residents to embrace tree planting, saying trees are vital to human existence. Trees are essential to ecosystems in which they reside, as they control climate by moderating the effects of sun, rain, and wind. They also absorb and store rainwater, which prevents the transport of chemicals into drinkable water. The environment is a very important pillar. You know, it's something that we all need to take very seriously. We are very committed to ensuring that we protect the environment for our future. It's, it's, a, it's a big problem because we all know that climate change is real. The theme of this year's exercise is Clean Green is our perfect dream. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos Nationwide continues in Abuja after the break. Enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. You're watching Nationwide and we are back in Abuja. Ten persons, including three children and the owner of the collapsed building in the Limi area of Jazz Metropolis, have so far been confirmed dead. Our correspondent visited the site of the incident for an update. In addition to the seven casualties evacuated from the rubbles of the collapsed building yesterday, four more bodies have been evacuated, among which are three children who were confirmed dead. 
making a total of 10 dead people who are reported to have been buried, while one person is said to be at the intensive care unit of the Bingham Teaching Hospital. Uh, today in the morning, around 6.30, the evacuation process started. Three children were evacuated, and uh, in the last 15 minutes, uh, an adult was evacuated too. They are all uh, not responding. The governor of Plassey State represented, who was there to sympathize with the people of the community, also assured them of government's decisions to put adequate machineries in place to forestall future occurrences. These things that happen are not the creation of anybody, but we ourselves. So we should be on the lookout to see that we prevent, you know, uh, reoccurrences. That from now onwards, JMDB, Lanza Survey, and the security agencies will move street to street, identify buildings that are not properly structured, mark them for demolition, and we are going to demolish them. The regulatory authorities should take up responsibilities because we cannot afford to be losing human lives with this kind of uh, carelessness. I call this carelessness because it is avoidable. If uh, they are inspecting properly and standards have been observed, they will not record this. Both the security officials and disaster management teams are still working on the site for proper and complete evacuation of the site. In Jos, Zen Redding Moon, NTA News. Children are said to be one of the vulnerable groups in the world who deserve utmost love and support. Abandoned children are even more vulnerable. This session informed the outreach to the Vine Heritage Foundation in Key Kuje Ukugal. Uh, Area Council of the FCT. Toibat Anifu Ushe reports that the outreach was carried out by a non governmental organization, Sora Optimist International. This is Vine Heritage Home Foundation in Kiyi community, which accommodates over 150 children but with limited resources. However, but this is not a regular orphanage. It is a foster home for children who have escaped infanticides carried out in Kiyi community, such as twins, those born with albinism, or infants whose mothers die during childbirth. Killing of twins, albinos, children who lost their mothers, children who were born with deformities, and children who grew the upper tooth first. Those are the reasons why those children were here. If they are not here, they will not be alive. I believe, being a missionary, that this is not just the only place in Nigeria where this practice is found. This non governmental organization, Soroptimist International, which comprises well meaning female Nigerians, are part of the few people who have not forgotten the existence of these children in the Federal Capital Territory. We as a group empower, educate and enable girls and um, women. And so we do charity jobs, we do advocacy and we cater for women and girls. And so it was our turn for us to, the time when we designed that we'll come out and do outreach for the less privileged. The resources we spend come from us. We don't get any subvention from anybody. We tax ourselves as an individual since we are a non-governmental organization. We expect that in the very near future, we are going to see some of these children who will actually come out to tell their own story. Organizers expect that this outreach will at least meet some of the basic needs of these children. Toyiba News. As the World Mags Youth Skills Day focus is on the alarming number of unemployed and uneducated youths as well as adults who have no relevant skills. With the theme Learning to Learn for Life and Work, skills development and decent jobs for youths as key feature of the 2030 agenda of the SGDs have become more relevant. Olain Kaojo has more. United Nations record shows that there are presently more than 1.1 billion young people between the ages of 15 and 24, representing 16% of the global population. Consequently, young people are almost three times more likely to be unemployed than other adults, and they continually face challenges of greater labor market inequalities. 
To advocate skills as an important factor to improve young people's transition to decent work and highlight the crucial role of skilled youths in addressing challenging global issues is why the World Youth Skills Day is celebrated. Today's world needs youth who can create, who can innovate, and who can learn for life and work. With technological and societal development, labor markets and corresponding skills requirements are changing fast. With the theme, learning to learn for life and work, the importance of technical and vocational education and training in providing youths with opportunities to develop their competences and accelerate their transition to work is said to be necessary. Government will continue to invest in programs that will respond to the challenges you face daily as you strive to contribute your quota to the development of the country. Every organization beyond employing beyond creating wealth, should have a mini training center for total skill acquisition of all Nigerians. The National Youth Policy defines a youth as someone between 15 and 34 years. So, are you wondering what this 12 years old girl, Angel Dennis, is doing at this year's event? She's one of the participants among several exhibitors at this year's event, who through the power of skills have moved into a prosperous future. The heat press and the cutting plotter work hand in hand. After you take the material that you're finished writing on the cutting plotter, you peel it and take it to the heat press where you can paste it on your t-shirts with the heat. When you see a young lady like this doing this much at 12, what can we say when she's 15, when she's 18? Since age is no barrier to skills acquisition for improved standards of living, learning to learn strategies employed to live and work ultimately for 2019 edition involves learning what you know, learning what you do not know, and learning what to do about it. Olainka Ojo, NTA News. EFCC intensifies campaign against corruption and Abubakar Mohammed Musa in Meiduguri will give us details as well as other reports. Good afternoon to you, Joseph, and thank you for joining us in Meiduguri. Borno State Government is determined to resuscitate the agricultural sector to ensure food sufficiency, restore the means of livelihood of the internally displaced, most of whom are from agrarian communities and to address the issue of entitlement syndrome. Governor Babagana Umara stated this when he visited some farmers on their farmlands along Mafa Dikwa Road as part of his official engagement in the area. Mohamed Guni reports. While plugging up distribution of farm inputs to 10,000 IDPs in Muna Camp, Governor Babagana Umara said the state government targets 100,000 IDPs to benefit from the gesture. The beneficiaries were full of gratitude for the gesture and expressed readiness to return to farm. The visit to one of the farms was to see progress in the farming activities where the governor was impressed by the enthusiasm of the farmers. This effort is being done with a view to achieving food security in the to expand land so that this year not in fewer than 40,000 to 50,000 hectares of land shall be cultivated including the farm. The governor assured the farmers of continuous support, expressing optimism that the state government will surpass the 10,000 hectares given by the CBN as condition to participate in its accelerated agricultural program with over 5,000 hectares already cultivated. Under the state government's agricultural program, arrangement has already been made to ensure that farmers are protected on their farmland as civilian JTF and hunters have been mobilized in all the 27 local government areas with logistics provided to them as well as offer review of their allowances with mechanism put in place to ensure regular and prompt payment. While in Dikwa and Mapa, the governor also met stakeholders, women and IDPs, where he assured them of continued support to enable them to return to farm and the business activities. In Maiduguri, Mamat Kuroni, NTA News. Theater Commander Operation Lafayette Doli, Major General Benson Akinroliyo, 
has charged soldiers, especially troops on the front line, to ensure that they operate within the rules of military engagement at all times. The theater commander made this known during the inauguration of General Court Marshal, which took place at the officers' mess in Mimalari Cantonment, Meduguri. Here are more details of the story. The inauguration of General Court Marshal is in accordance with Nigeria's Armed Forces Act towards ensuring that soldiers operate within the confines of the military as well as prosecute those found wanting in the line of duty. Theater Commander Operation Lafia Doli, Major General Benson Akiroliyo said the operational efficacy of the military is better retained when the ethics and norms aimed at enhancing discipline are encouraged, which he explained informed his decision to convene a general court martial under his command. Military as an institution is known with maintenance of discipline and decorum in its ways of doing things. He noted that the court does not have any special interest to serve than strictly adhering to routine duties within the realm of regimentation and therefore assured that proceedings will be carried out in accordance with laid down rules. We, we make sure that level playing ground is provided for the accused persons and the prosecution. The theater commander, Operation Lafia Doli, called on president and members of the court as well as councils to discharge their responsibilities without fear or favor in Meduguri. The fight against corruption is said to be a collective responsibility that requires all hands on deck. Sonal Head of Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC Borno State, Lawrence Iwodi, made this assertion at a rally organized by the commission to commemorate the third African anti-corruption campaign. Jadwa Chunjasni will now tell us more. The African Anti-Corruption Day, founded in Mozambique 2003, has a call to action with this year's theme towards a common African position on assets recovery. Lawrence Iwodi said the day was established as a result of African leaders coming together to stand against corruption due to setback it has brought in areas of trade, investment, and globalization in various nations. The rally, he said, was to consolidate on the effort of African leaders through continuous and collective tracking and recovery of all stolen public funds and assets. He expressed optimism that with combined effort of the police, the Nigerian Labour Congress, network of civil society organizations, and the Nigerian Bar Association, among others, corruption will be eradicated from the society. Lawrence Iwodi also revealed that EFCC Borno State had from January to June 2019 recovered the whooping sum of 161 million naira, and efforts have been put in place to ensure that more are recovered. 30 cases are still in court and uh, are undergoing prosecution. Um, we have received a lot of complaints and we are making progress in the investigation. We know that all these activities we are carrying out will help in curtailing um, the activities of corrupt persons uh, in the society. Chairman, Network of Civil Society Organizations, NLC, and that of Nigerian Bar Association, among other speakers, described the campaign as the best step taken to stop unlawful self-enrichment through corruption and assured their support at all times. In Meduguri, Jadwa John Jesini, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Meduguri. Let's now rejoin Joseph in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Abubakar. A bit on politics now, former chief of naval staff Admiral Usman Jibril has joined the list of governorship aspirants on the platform of the All Progressives Congress for the forthcoming governorship election in Kogi State. Saliu Abdullahi reports that the governorship aspirant, while obtaining the party's expression of interest and nomination forms, promised to play the game according to the rules of the party throughout the pre-election processes. <laughs> the mood of supporters of the governorship aspirant in Kogi State, Admiral Jibril Osman, when they accompany him to the All Progressives Congress National Secretariat to obtain his nomination and expression of interest forms. There are men and women, young and old, drawn from the 21 local government areas of Kogi State, championing the political slogan of the aspirant who says he is on a rescue mission to positively turn around Kogi State to the path of development if given the mandate to fly the party's flag ahead of the November 16 governorship poll. To pull Kogi State from the brink calls for experienced 
visionary, purposeful, competent, and inspiring leadership. I am certain that the current negative indicators are not our destiny. And I have always maintained that in the midst of these depressing signals of leadership failure, there is always hope for a new beginning under a competent, purposeful, and focused leadership, which I tend to provide. National Organizing Secretary of the APC, Emma Ebidiro, presented the expression of interest and nomination forms to the former naval chief and urged him to obey party rules and work towards sustaining the party's glory in Kogi State. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, retired senior military and security officers of Katsina State Extraction have advocated for a robust approach and genuine dialogue in addressing security challenges confronting the frontline states in the Northwest. This was the consensus of experts and critical stakeholders at a security interactive summit convened in Katsina. Correspondent Bashir Ibrahim Nababa completes the report. Communities in the eight frontline local government areas of Kassan State have been under frequent attacks by armed bandits, which has resulted in the loss of lives and property worth millions of naira. Worried by the development, former top military, police, and other security personnel from the state converged on Kasana to forge a common front in finding lasting solutions to insecurity in the state. Chairman of the occasion and former military governor of Sokoto State, Brigadier General Ahmad Muhammad Daku, described security as everybody's business, hence their decision to interface and come out with a template that will assist government and security agencies in restoring peace. From our deliberation, they will find that there is something useful for them, which will help them towards achieving security for the nation or for the state. In their separate remarks, the former Director General, National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Maharazu Iga, and Assistant Inspector General of Police, Dalami Aradwa, noted that government needs to adopt short, medium, and long-term measures to contain the situation. In as much as the government is doing the best it can, I assure you, she, it will, she will not succeed until, of course, it gets the cooperation of others. The convener of the summit and chairman, Awareness for Good Leadership, Peace and Development, Abdullahi Aliu, expressed hope that with input from the caliber of personalities in attendance, peace will return in the affected areas. In Kasna, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. Let's just bring you more reports now from our Benin Network Center, and here is Obey. Hello, Joseph. Thanks for joining us in Benin. About 455 persons from Nwaisige community in Ofia Northeast local government area have benefited from free medical service courtesy of the Nigerian Army 4 Brigade. The gesture is in commemoration of the Nigerian Army Day celebrated earlier in the month. Anwili Okolo reports. Officers and men of the 4 Brigade joined their counterparts all over the country to mark the Army Day. To further deliver on its social corporate responsibility, the 4 Brigade extended its free medical service to Unwa Esige community. A full team of Army medical professionals and paramedics were on ground to attend to the people with dental care sensitization, laboratory tests, consultation, free glasses and medicines. Mosquito nets were also given to members of the community. We have never seen kind of thing before. And you can see from the faces of other members of the community, they are very happy. I said, maybe they take care of our environment, then maybe they brush our teeth well. It's another way of uh, boosting the existing uh, cordial relationship between the military and the, uh, the civilians in our environment. This year's theme of the Army Day celebration, professionally responsive soldiering, a panacea for successful military operation is fast becoming a culture for the commander and the soldiers of the 4 Brigade, as he has indicated continued free impact programs in host communities. In Benin, Anwali Okolo, NTN News. 
The president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria and Archbishop of Benin Metropolitan C, Most Reverend Augustine Akubezi, has reiterated the need for unity in diversity and evangelization for the growth of God's kingdom. This was at the opening mass of the missionary year in the Archdiocese of Benin. Jude Aweke reports. The Catholic Archdiocese of Benin Missionary Year is coming after the Holy Father, Pope Francis, declared October this year as an extraordinary missionary month to mark the centenary of Pope Benedict XV's 1919 Apostolic Letter on Propagation of the Gospel to the World. To celebrate the extraordinary missionary month, Pope Francis selected 25 cent figures as models of periodic witness to the mission of the Church. They include two Nigerians, Blessed Cyprian Iwenetansi and Vivian Ogun, the 14-year-old girl who was brutally murdered by armed robbers in Benin City for refusing to be assaulted sexually. Archbishop Akubezi wants Christians to unite and proclaim the good news of Christ to the nooks and crannies of the world. Everyone can be involved in this world. Do this by reaching out to people who have not heard the good news before. The theme of the missionary year is Baptized and Saints, the Church of Christ on Mission in Benin City, from the Holy Cross Cathedral in Benin. Jude Aweke, NTA News. And that's it from Benin Nationwide. Continues with Joseph in Abuja. Obahi, thanks. The automated expatriate quota administration process recently introduced by the federal government is already receiving wide-range acceptability as foreign investors are applauding government for the initiative. Doing Dia was at a one-day stakeholders meeting organized by the Ministry of Interior where investors reaffirmed their commitment to the development of Nigeria's economy. As one of the fastest growing economy in Africa, Nigeria has over the years relied on both local and foreign investments to drive its economy. This move also came with the engagement of foreigners by most of the multinational companies established in the country. To regulate the flocks of such guests, the federal government in line with the Section 36 of the Immigration Act introduced the Expatriate Quota Administration System, a process which allowed multinational companies and foreign investors submit manually the resume and other documents of expatriates to be engaged for work permits and due accreditation. This process, however, received a first lift with the introduction of the automated system. We also hope that uh, the gaps we have in our system, we can rely on uh, the countries that have these skills, uh, the companies that are uh, here in Nigeria operating, to be, bring all those rare uh, and expert skills in. Faisal Bhutta is one of the expatriates attending the meeting. He explained how the online application process has helped his company and all the foreign investors to carry out their business with due diligence. Yeah, I mean, like, if everything uh, right now, it's, it's online. And uh, once everybody can access such kind of thing, and uh, it, the, without cutting any corners or whatever, definitely it will help business to grow. In terms of expatriate quota, they want to bring in expatriates to come and live and work in Nigeria. They reach out to us. So at the point of embassy to when they get into Nigeria, we have interface with them. I also took time to assess the site, which now provide online application for various facilities granted by the ministry, payment of services rendered, marriage, an interactive database for all application amongst Nigerians. Hence, I'll note the migrant e-registration policy is key towards ensuring national security and the coalition of much needed data on migrants living in Nigeria. But let me clear the air in terms of the understanding people have on the e-registration. The e-registration is compulsory. It's not voluntary. The act is very clear, the regulation is very clear, that if you don't register after 90 days when you enter Nigeria, you have committed an offense. Ensure that uh, we are able to register uh, enough people to make this data worthwhile. 
uh, such that we are not relying on anecdotal data. This uh, symbiotic relationship that we have uh, with the uh, uh, um, NIS has been uh, uh, good in protecting uh, uh, Nigerians and also uh, in terms of people being trafficked. Whether you are migrating internally or internationally, this is a reality. All we need to do is to manage it. They also advise against profiling all migrants as criminals, as these may lead to reprisal reactions towards Nigerians living in other countries. In Abuja, Abdul Salam Jubril, NTA News. Well, let's just take you back to a previous story in which we told you that President Muhammad Bari has formally broken his silence over the recent attacks on his administration from certain quarters, saying those who politicize isolated incidents of insecurity are neither patriotic nor half the country at heart. The president said this while exchanging views with a delegation of the Buhari campaign organization on a solidarity visit. State House correspondent Adam Osama reports now. The delegation of the Buhari campaign organization comprising the national and state executive as well as board of trustee members was in the state house to interface with the president on the state of the nation and the best way forward. President Buhari, who appreciated their contributions towards his re-election, reassured them that the governing APC will not be disappointing. I assure you and Nigerians that we will not relent in our efforts to secure the country from criminal activities. Those who politicize the isolated instance of insecurity are not patriotic Nigerians. This administration will use all the resources at its disposal to protect the lives and properties of all Nigerians, and not just prominent Nigerians or those who make headlines. The federal government, he maintained, will continue to be tough on the menace of corruption as efforts are being intensified towards fulfilling the promise of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. I want to reassure you that Nigeria is open for business as no country in the world has achieved rapid economic growth without significant foreign direct investment. We are keeping our currency steady and are adopting pro-business policies to encourage private sector investment. Policies put in place to support farmers and small businesses are yielding positive results and we are determined to integrate them into the larger economy. Both the coordinator of the Buhari campaign organization, Danladi Pasali, and the national grand patron, Senator Abba Ali, reassured Nigerians that the Buhari administration will indeed take Nigeria to the next level of development for a sustainable future of the country. We are ever ready to continue supporting this administration to actualize its set objectives, policies, principles, so as to consolidate on the previous feast as the journey to the next level of our country development is on the right track. We shall continue to pray for you and for this country so that you leave a legacy in this country that will never be forgotten. Some members of the organization speak on their takeaways from the interactive session with the president. I'm taking away from the president's promise and commitments that he is going to continue and he will not relent in his effort to provide security and welfare to Nigerians and very sure the president will not fail the nation. He is an excellent person. Nigeria should be very grateful to have him now as the leader driving the country and I believe that uh, Sky will be the starting point. And whenever his term finishes, whoever he so wishes to continue his foundation were behind that person. The Buhari campaign organization has proposed the establishment of Muhammad Buhari Foundation as a deliberate attempt towards upholding and sustaining the ideals and principles of the Nigerian leader for a greater Nigeria. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide coming to you live on the network service of the NTA. Bright in Enugu has the next set of reports. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Enugu Network Center. 
participant at the National Advocacy on Popularization of Innovation Enterprise Institution, IEIS, have called on both the federal and state governments to use and patronize the institution in their various programs aimed at addressing poverty and unemployment in the country. Ifomando Kuli was at the one day program which has the team empowering Nigerian youths through innovation enterprise institutions. The Federal Ministry of Education approved the establishment of Innovation Enterprise Institutions, IEIs, in 2007 to equip senior secondary school leavers and working adults with vocational skills to meet the increasing demands of technical manpower in the various sectors of the nation's economy. But surprisingly, 12 years down the line, enrollment into the institution has not been encouraging as not up to 50,000 students have registered since inception. The advocacy program is therefore aimed at enhancing public recognition and acceptability of IEIs and as well improve students' enrollment and retention. It is true that the number of institutions as a mystified joint articulation board job, are so insufficient enough to cut out for the technical and vocational requirements of our citizens. IEIs are supposed to enable our youth to acquire the best skills because it's a technical and institutions. Resource persons at the event suggested that availing them with the phone numbers of candidates that applied for IEIs by JAMB will be a right step towards improving enrollment of students into the program. Presently, over 150 IEIs have been licensed to operate and provide middle level manpower in various skills. In Enugu, Ifama Ndu Okolie, NTA News. The Imo State Environmental Transformation Commission, NTRACO, has embarked on environmental activities to curb flood problems in the state. Reno Huey has details. Among the steps taken by the Imo State Environmental Transformation Commission are the setting of gutters, water tunnels, and blocked drainage systems. This is to ensure the free flow of water, especially during this rainy season. The commission is also striving to beautify the state with trees, restore sanity in indiscriminate multi and illegal motor parks across the state and eliminate street trading. We are trying to identify parks where we move them to. We don't want to just displace people, but if you you create problems. We have identified a couple of parks. By Monday, Tuesday, they have agreed to move to those parks. Residents also commended Environmental Commission for the steps taken so far in their one month in office. We've been seeing uh, this time around the way the things are going, so we are very, very happy. Well, that's good. It's not, it's not only here. I wanted uh, so many, many places like uh, Omogoma. Meanwhile, the Commission has reiterated their approach of aggressive enlightenment campaign to residents on the need to sustain the Clean Oware slogan from Oware, the Imo State capital. Rina Ohiri, NCA News. That's it from Enugu. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Joseph after this break. Television College JAWS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft in favor of NTA TV. TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com. Or call 0803 3144 383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. Registrar announcer. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism 
and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. Or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. <laughs> In sports, Nigeria women's 